everybody and welcome to the flute practice. Today we are here at the Flute Centre of New York and we're going to talk a little bit about buying a flute, what to look out for. The first important thing to note is that you've kind of got three main categories of flutes. You've got your beginner flutes, you've got your intermediate flutes and you've got your professional higher-end flutes. The differences of these flutes are really kind of quality and nuances. Uh, the more professional the flute is, the more kind of refined the mechanism is, the more refined the sound is, the more refined the possibilities of the sound. So here at the Flute Center, I've been explained, all the flutes that are stocked here are great, functioning, reliable instruments. But the difference in price is usually, not always, but usually kind of an indicator of the difference in quality. If you're starting out, you want to go for a beginner flute, you want to go for something that you can afford and you can really play on until you kind of reach the limit of what is possible. And then you want to step it up to a student model or an intermediate model flute, which is usually kind of a combination between the more professional flute and the much more beginner flute. So you want to step it up, you play on this instrument for a good few years and you'll probably get to a point where you kind of hit a barrier as well. And then you're going to want to step it up to a professional instrument. I'm going to look at some of the kind of main specs that you want to look out for when you're buying a new instrument. The first thing you want to look out for or you want to decide on is are you going to buy a closed hole flute or an open hole flute? Now both are perfectly fine, both are perfectly great. Uh, usually beginner flutes like this one come closed hole, uh, they're easier to play especially for beginner and for children that are starting out. They kind of take the stress away of having to close the holes with your fingers which you have to do with the open hole flute. There are some advantages of the open hole flute. One of the biggest ones I can think of is that my hands kind of form kind of a nice natural hand position, which is great for playing the flute. It gives you some possibilities as well for multiphonics, for note bending, for some modern effects and techniques. There is some debate about whether or not it changes the sound or increases the quality of the sound. I just recommend trying out both and seeing what you like better. Um, most professionals do play on open hole flute, although I've seen some moves towards playing on closed hole flutes again, so I'm not going to be prescriptive here. I'm just going to kind of let you do what you want to do. The other thing that you want to check out is inline or offset. I don't believe I have any inline instruments here, mostly because I play offset, not inline, um, so I'm trying out all the offsets. But basically, if you look up close, the inline keys are literally, as the name says, all in one line, whereas the offset, the G, keys here are just slightly off to the side. Uh, this is better, especially if you've got smaller hands, just makes it a little bit more comfortable. But there are people that swear by the inline keys as well, that it's better for the hand position and so on. I don't know, I've been playing offset my whole life and I'm very comfortable with it. I like it a lot. Um, I don't think there's kind of a right or a wrong. Once again, you've got to find what fits your hand and what you're comfortable with and what you're used to. Usually, if you start on the one, you kind of stay on the one, you know with some rare exceptions. The one advantage of the offset is that it usually comes with what we call the split E mechanism. Um, the split E mechanism, you can just, you know, ask, it should come kind of in the perks, but it basically helps us play our high E's better. Without the split E mechanism, it can be quite tricky to get that high E out. So usually the split E mechanism, you've got that little rod over there, that's your dead giveaway, your split E. So this Muramatsu, for example, is not a split E, Totally honestly, I hardly would have noticed. Um, I think in these high-end models, they're so well made that the split E comes into effect a little bit less than they would, but especially in the lower models, you might want to get a split E mechanism that makes your life a lot easier. I've had students without it and it is quite disastrous. The other thing you're going to want to check out is whether or not you would like a B foot joint or a C foot joint. Now, B foot um, is quite standard these days. I think most flute players at least here in the States, as far as I'm aware of, play with the B foot. Uh, in Europe, apparently it's a little less common, but basically I would recommend um, that you may as well get the B foot. It's not, you know, it's just adding to your flute. It's not taking away, but do try um, your flute if you can with B foot and C foot. Sometimes it even changes the sound. It does make the flute slightly heavier. So if you're used to playing a C foot, it's going to change the balance in your hands slightly. This can be a bit frustrating in the beginning, but you do get used to it, I promise. I've gone through that process. Um, but usually if you don't have the B foot, if you only got the C foot, you have to order the B foot extra and that can be quite expensive and sometimes um, difficult to kind of get hold of the same B foot 
grand as your flute. Uh, apparently in Muramatsu this is difficult to do for examples. I would recommend go ahead and just buy the B flat joint and then you've got it. There's an extra little perk that some flutes have which is the C sharp trill key. Uh, you can see this guy's got it. So there's a little extra trill over there and it trills up there. Basically this allows you to instead of playing that C sharp. It's really, it is useful but it's not essential. It's a nice little added extra if you like it, if you want it. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on this but you can get different types of head joints as well. You can kind of mix and match a little bit if you like. You can get head joints with risers, with wings, uh, the circle tubasa head joint. You can get grenadine or, or wooden head joints. You can kind of mix this around. Um, when you're at a flute shop like this one, you can try out different head joints and see how they feel if you, you know, are really specifically and quite particularly looking for something. Of course, you also want to look at things like the material used in your flute. So are you using silver? Are you using gold? What, what do you sound like on a silver flute or a gold flute? What are the differences? Uh, this is important and I think that not everyone is a gold flute player. Some people just don't like the sound on a gold flute. So you need to figure out whether or not you enjoy this or like this. There are many levels of this. Some flutes just have a solid silver head and a silver plated body. Some silver flutes have fully silver. Some just have the silver body and head, but the keys are plated. So there are different variations to this. Same goes for the gold. Remember that most of the sound comes from your head joint. So the material of your head joint is actually gonna make the greatest difference than the body of the flute. Um, for the key work to be solid silver, usually just makes it more durable and reliable um, with the plated, your fingers can kind of eat away at the metal um, eventually and you need to get it replated at some point. That's kind of the perks of having the solid silver keywork. You can also look at things like soldered tone holes. So those are when the tone holes are kind of soldered onto the tube or drawn tone holes where they are drawn out of the tube. Traditionally, the soldered tone holes are kind of more professional level. They're usually a bit more expensive, higher level, whatever. But the sound difference is probably quite minimal to be totally honest with you there is a difference but it's not huge so don't make your decision based on whether or not the tone holes are soldered or not that would be quite silly cool guys that was just a nice little bit on what all these specs mean when buying a flute remember when you're buying through the flute center you can use my code and get some really cool added benefits you get your 18 month warranty you get your 10 day free trial instead of a seven day trial you will also get free shipping that's including international people you get your free shipping once you've bought your flute so that's really cool and of course you're supporting me because i'm getting commission on each flute that you guys buy until then happy flute shopping and see you next time